had been a long time, and this story will maybe shed some light to uh, where I've been. Before I go into the story, I want to share a story I was just told by my wife that I thought it was appropriate for the beginning of this week. The story is about a leader, an established leader in, let's just say, the development field. And he talks about when he was in college. Uh, this, and it's narrated by the heroine in the story of this woman, who was a freshman, it's admissions day. She's nervous, she's anxious. She's standing there with her very loving, supporting parents, and they're telling her, this is Annie. If you don't want to do this, we'll go back home, and we'll do it next year. She takes her breath, and she looks, and she sees this guy. The guy who's in the story is like, oh, he's wearing this Dr. Seuss hat, and he's got candy, and he's handing it to everybody, and he gets to her, and he just stands there and just looks at him. And then he gives a candy to the guy next to her, and says, give this woman some candy. So she gets it, and he looks at her husband and her parent and says, first day away from home and she's already taking candy from strangers. <laughs> <laughs> How often? The small facts. This person didn't remember. She showed up on his graduation day. She found out who he was and told him, that man that gave me those flowers is my fiance I'm going to get married. And I want to invite you to the wedding and thank you. Thank you. And he's like, I really, no memory. How often do we in our lives have situations in which we've done things that we don't remember whom or for what? I'm some heroes. The story of Joe is the story of my mother-in-law. Who six months ago was diagnosed with a late stage cancer. And I remember that day, because my wife, who's normally the pillar, strong woman as she is, was crying, and she's like, where's my mom? And I said, Leslie, you're not going to your mom. We're going to beat this. And that was Joe's attitude. We're going to beat this. But July 2nd, my mother-in-law passed away. But it isn't her death that matters, though there's a lot of things that have come about her life. And I want to share a little bit about her life, a little bit about her past. Jo Lewis grew up in Toledo, Ohio. She was born in 1943. It's the 1950s. Well, take a step back. She's three years old. She finds out she doesn't have much of a memory. Dad's dead. In a car accident. That was published all over the paper. He was with another woman, drunk. Mom lost it. Her biological mom lost it. She was already had mental illness, and depressant and all other things. So she never really knew her mom because she was in and out of hospitals. And she was raised by her Aunt Betty, who she called mom. And Aunt Betty was the matriarch. She made a difference in the lives of Joanne. Present when it comes down to finances, a shelter, food, water. But absent emotionally, absent as a mother would be, but she loved him. And she was always an outlier. But even by the time she was in the 50s, she liked to hang out with the black kids. She liked to hang out with the Jewish kids. It was a segregated world. She also liked to hang out with the Catholics, which is, she's a white Protestant, and you don't do that. <coughs> and she married one. She's still married. And her partner, for 26 years, Pat, was a friend. And for, I don't know, 20 years I've been going to the house. I've been married to my wife for 15 years. But they, and Joe especially, and she was a mother, a universal mother, and the kind of giving, and the kind of remembrance, and all the unsung acts. Well, I'll get to it. But on the day she died, as they're taking out her body, and I was, I was myself throughout the whole process, because personally, in my beliefs, the people that know me here, we are eternal beings. This is a temporary life. But it doesn't mean you don't love life, and you don't want to live, and be around for your kids and grandkids. And she said she was going to beat this, and she wanted She had planned a trip back to Toledo, Ohio, where she grew up. Cross-country trip, kind of like what they did when they were kids. Then as things progressed, 
We didn't get that age. And then the cross country trip, they came, we're gonna fly there. And then in the last three weeks, the reality of it's not gonna happen. But on the day they were taking her away, the day before, Pat, her partner for 26 years, even though she's married to Don, my professor at the university. <laughs> anyway, he tells me the story about the day they moved in this house, sometime in 1994. And he said it was a stormy, rainy day, all sorts of stuff was going on, and they were running around, because the house was a fixer-upper, putting pots and pans everywhere, water came in, and flooded, and they worked out for six, seven hours just trying to keep the house from breaking apart. And then they said they sat down for a drink. And I flashed back on that as I saw them take her body out, and I started to cry. I kept thinking, she walked into this house that day with all those things she was doing, right? I wasn't there, but she's being carried away. But what really struck me were all those people that showed up that she didn't want to have around because she thought she was gonna beat it, she was gonna have a celebration party. But when that celebration didn't happen, Towards the last three weeks, oh my God, all the people that showed up, and the stories, the young teacher, man who, I don't know, and he was just crying out, like, it's okay, it's okay. He's like, why, why? Why would this happen to someone who was so good, who's done so much? And he talked about when he was a starting teacher, how he had no patience with the kids, how he bruised and she would call him, I guess teachers do that, by his last name, Fuller, come here. And she would tell him, listen, just try this, try that. And the ch church, <laughs> the Sunday church group that showed up, and these guys were like a motley crew, bikers and professionals, and it wasn't church. They'd get around and drink, but they were having a good time, and she didn't want them. And when they showed up, the stories, the tears, the genuine connection, and the difference between people showing up because they're doing obligation, and people who show up because they really, that person means something to them. And that's, so, what to say? Let us endeavor to live our life so that even when it's time for the undertaker to take us, they'll say, oh, I'm going to decide because we're taking this beautiful, incredible, unsung hero, the children.